Hey, Dry Hard Middle School. Got another woodshop project for you today. We're going to make a uh, toolbox. I figure you guys probably are accumulating some tools and it'd be nice for you to have your own homemade wooden toolbox that you can customize and put some of your tools in there. Have it for years to come. So we're going to use some pine like we did with the birdhouse and we did that with the, uh, the other, the, was it the iPad or tablet or phone holder. Um, but you can use anything you want. What I've got for wood for this one is a little bit wider piece than what we had before. I've got a piece of 1 by 10. I've actually got a bunch already pre-cut. So 1 by 10 pine you're going to need. And, of course, some of the same tools that we used before. Tape measure, a square of some kind would be helpful. Pencil. Um, we are going to need a drill, a uh, way to drill a hole and also drive some screws. And, of course, your handsaw and some clamps would be handy. But I'm going to show you um, some things you can, if you don't have a lot of clamps, there's some other options that you have. And of course, some screws. We're going to be screwing it all together, and I'll talk about those as we go. Um, <clears throat> the plan itself, I've got kind of one part of it drawn up here. As you can see, this is the cutting list down here. These are the different parts. You can see the width of a 1 by 10 board is not 10 inches, but it's 9 and a quarter wide. And this is going to be our bottom piece, so you're going to need one of those. The same width of the board, which is 9 and a quarter by 18. You're going to need two end pieces, which are these pieces here, one on each end. Those are 12 inches long. And you're going to need a couple side pieces, which is half of actually. We're going to take one of these 1 by 10s and split it down the middle. And those are going to be our two sides, but that's going to basically be 18, two pieces 18 inches long. So. Um, and, of course, you're going to need some kind of handle. And I'll talk about your handle options. A lot of toolboxes, they have a wooden dowel of some kind. But you may have some, you have some other options there as well. But, so some kind of a handle. I'm going to use a piece of three-quarter inch dowel, wooden dowel. And that should be the same length as a box, about 18 inches long. Okay. These measurements I'll go over again in a minute. These are for some of the detailed cuts that we have in drilling for the two side pieces, which is a little bit more complicated. But... Nothing you guys can't handle. All right, so for starters, I've already, like I said, pre-cut some of the pieces, but I want to show you, I'm just going to cut right now one of these 12-inch pieces here that we're going to use for the side so I can show you guys how to do this layout and how to drill the hole. We'll do that first, I think. So I've got a piece left over from my board. I actually used a about 6 feet. You got really only need 5 feet, but I used a 6-foot board and... With that, I had enough to get the wood I need, and also a little bit left over if I have a problem or make a mistake. But it also allows you to avoid knots in key places, so you can kind of work around those. So our first piece that we're going to cut is going to be 12 inches, and just going to, just like we did before, we measure along the edge of our board 12 inches. And you notice how I'm avoiding these knots here. I'm going to make that my waist piece. So that's my 12 inch. Measure it twice, and then. I'm going to use a square and then make my line. I always try to remember to use a square. The thing about the design for this toolbox is it'd be nice if all our cuts were perfectly square. If they're not, it's not really the end of the world. You, it'll still come together pretty well. So, uh, but you want to try to get it as, as straight as you can. So we're going to cut that off. And I'm going to show you a little option here if you don't have clamps. There's always a way you can, you can uh, secure this board. I've got like a makeshift table set up here but what you can do if you happen to have some screws and some scrap wood you can just kind of if you have a work surface that you can screw into you can use a piece of wood like I've got here you see I've got a piece of wood with some longer screws and I'm just going to screw that down to my work surface and that's going to give me basically a whole lot of clamping power Yeah, that's strong it is, so it works pretty well, so you don't absolutely need to clamp for a lot of this stuff. Um, you can also, in some cases, we'll show you, you can actually screw the wood directly to a tabletop. So remember our um, cutting technique with a little handsaw. We're going to start by drawing the blade back. We'll get that corner cut off and get that cut started, and then we can start pushing forward. Remember to stand behind it. Don't stand off to the side. You'll end up moving your blade side to side and cutting crooked. So if you cut, I'm standing right behind it while you're cutting. 
but you can see where your blade is falling on that one. So, this box is made out of wood. See, we've got a nice sharp saw here. Um, putting something like a like a saw blade in there into a metal box and actually dull your saw blades and things. So having a wooden toolbox is beneficial for that. Okay, remember, as we get near the end, we don't want to break that off. We want to cut it clean. So support the board. Take some really short, gentle strokes near the end. There. And cut it as cleanly as possible, like that. Okay. That's actually not the piece we want. We want this one here, so let's take that back off. Clamp. See how well that clamping system worked? Pretty well. Alright, so now we've got one of our sides, and what we're going to do is we're going to make it look like this, okay? And whenever you, <coughs> excuse me, whenever you're working with wood and you have a complicated layout like that, um, and you have a hole like this especially, we want to make sure we lay out and take care of that hole before we take these corners and cut them off, okay? The uh, problem would be if I, if I went ahead and cut these corners off, it would make it very difficult for me to measure to find the location of that hole because I've I need a corner to measure from, so keep it square, keep it as a rectangle before you go ahead and you know, drill your hole and measure that out, and then you can go ahead and do your cuts. Good thing to do is to lay out or mark everything before you do any drilling or cutting. We learned that in class, for some of you anyway. So, so to make this layout, you can see we've got the hole right here is in the center, dead center right there. And I think we're going to go about an inch and a quarter down. These angles, we don't really need to know angles. We don't need to know how many degrees are. We're just going to locate two points. We're going to measure from the bottom corner here. We're going to measure up six inches. We'll put, a, put a mark there. And we're going to measure over four inches. And we're going to put a mark there. And then we're just going to connect those two points. And then you can see how far down that hole is. Yeah, right there, one and a quarter down from the top. So we're going to do all that that measuring and all that marking, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So, first thing on that, on that hole, actually let's do the angles first. So we're just, like I said, we're gonna measure six inches up from the bottom. So go to the bottom edge here, put a mark right along that edge at six inches. Like that, we'll do that on both edges. Six inches here. And then we said we're gonna come four inches from the outside corner towards the center, four and four, and that leaves us that space in the middle for our handle and our hole. So those two points here and here and here and here, we connect those with a straight line. And we can use, let's see, let's see if this square will work. Yeah, that should work, make our straight line. Any, any kind of straight edge will work for that. We just connect those two points, and there we have our two angles. Just like that. Let's see what I did there. Right there. Okay. Now, to mark that hole, this is where it gets a little tricky. We gotta, we've got to find the center. Okay. I'm going to show you two ways to do it because we have to do find a center on another board like this as well. I'm going to show you the mathematical way here is just to simply measure that. And we have nine and one fourth, and half of nine, you know, is four and a half, and half of a fourth. Is an, is an eighth, so we add four and a half to an eighth, and we get four and five eighths. I'll tell you that measurement, but I'm going to show you um, another way, to find, easy way to find center of the board on, a, on our next piece that we're going to cut. So we measure four and five eighths. Now, four and a half is right here, and we just go five eighths is an additional eighth, so we go an eighth past four and a half, and that's, that's our location for our center of our board. To make sure that's right, it should be right if it measures the same from this edge. And there we have it. We have the same measurement on both sides, so we know that we're right in the center. So we're just going to take a square, and we're going to measure, excuse me, we're just going to mark a line down like that. And then all we need to do now is measure from the top down that inch and a quarter and make a line this way. Whenever you drill a hole, 
You don't mark a circle, you actually mark two intersecting lines where the point of the drill bit is going to be located. So we're going to measure down inch and one fourth and have our two intersecting lines. So we've got our hole to drill right there. You guys can see that right there. Okay, so we're going to drill a hole. Now the hole size is going to depend on what you're going to use for a handle. <clears throat> what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a wooden dowel. I happen to have a nice kind of actually old wooden dowel here and it's the diameter is three quarters of an inch okay which I think is a good size so I'm going to use that one but if you don't have a wooden dowel like that a lot of times you can find some dowels I just happen to be kicking around some stuff in my basement I found um, this old piece of furniture which is about the same I think probably close to three quarters diameter wooden basically a wooden dowel could use that this one here is <laughs> this is a handle from a plunger so Kind of gross, I know, but you could use something like that. It's just a wooden dowel, okay? If it's long enough, you can use it for a handle for your toolbox. And there's actually some other options as well. But anyway, so what we have to do is we have to drill a hole. And we're going to use this drill bit. We haven't used this drill bit, I don't think, yet. But this is called a spade bit or a speed bore bit. And you can see it's a flat bit with a point on it. Um, it's not going to make a beautiful hole, but it'll, it'll make the hole that we want. This is three quarters the diameter, so it's, it should work for that dowel that I'm using. And just like with the birdhouse, we're not going to drill all the way through. From one side, we're going to drill about a little more than halfway and then flip it over. That way we don't get the wood splitting out on the back side. And also, we don't want to drill into our surface here, so I've got a piece of scrap backer board, just a piece of scrap material that I'm going to lay on there so I don't drill into the tape. Okay. Now with this kind of drill bit, drilling something big, it's not a bad idea to clamp it. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp this down, I think. I think about it. Make sure it's not going to spin around on me or move around too much. Let's see if that's going to work like that. All right. That's pretty good. Let's see how that's going to work. So the larger the drill bit, the slower your speed should be on how fast it should be spinning. So go pretty slow, especially when you first start, and try to get it as straight as you can. I can tell I'm going pretty straight because it's not like making part of a circle right now. It's making a whole circle. So once I know that I'm going pretty straight, I just hold that angle and then put a little more pressure and a little more speed on it. A little too much, though. But most drill bits... Well, most power drills have a variable speed trigger. You don't have to pull it all the way. You can go real slow and real fast. Right, so I'm going kind of medium. Now, once that, you see how long that end is. Once that's sticking out the other side, which is probably close to it, we'll go a little bit further. Then we can flip it and we can finish it up from the other side. That's probably good right there. I'm going to clamp it. And the reason we waited for that little center point to poke through is so we know where to start drilling. All right, so we've got our point right there. Go ahead and clamp that again. And then we'll finish it up. <clears throat> start off kind of slow again. Make sure you got the angle right. pressure a little bit of speed that right, should do it all right that takes care of that we've got our hole let's see if the dowel fits in. it should so we got the dowel fits in there a little bit tight but it goes so about this end here probably could go in there with that drill bit and open that up a bit probably have to do that let me do that right now maybe <clears throat> There's a little bit of roughness in there. I can see it. You be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to break something. There we go. All right, so we've got our hole drilled. Now we have our hole drilled. We, now we just have to cut those angles. Okay, so again, if you you know wanted to use that clamping system that I showed you, you might be able to you could probably be able to do that here. I'm just going to use my clamp that I've been using. My hand, these are hand screw clamps or wood clamps. And I'm just going to use that here. So actually I'll clamp it over here so you guys can see better. Maybe. 
And make sure that's not going to be in the way of my saw blade here. Okay. No, I guess we're good. So we're just going to try to cut that angle. And if we're not perfect here, not the end of the world because this is there's nothing going to be screwed to that. It's just um, it's just part of the design of the toolbox that you'll see when we're done. So same idea. Stand behind it. and easy. There we go. We'll do the other side. That around. Oop, my clamp is in the way a little bit. Turn that. So remember, you can use C-clamps as well with this, right? You don't have to use hands for clamps. some rough edges here so if you happen to have a file at home this would be a good edge to kind of take those rough edges off on the corners and that, round everything over any place you're going to be doing adding some wood like we're going to have some wood for the sides here we want to leave that nice and square bottom two but the only places where it's, you're going to have exposed surfaces really are these edges here so you can round those over you can take your time do a good job of that, make them nice and round, file out some of the uh, saw blade marks, and you could sand it, because it'll make it look really nice. And I'll probably do that after I'm done here, but a little bit more. So this is a file, this is a woodworking file. Um, it's got a half round, it's a half round file for inside curves, concave shapes, and I need to use the flat side for something like this. Notice I'm not going straight like that. You end up with kind of rough marks on the edge there. I'm kind of moving it this way where the cutting happens, but also moving it down at an angle. Kind of two different motions at the same time, like that. Oops, like that. All right, so we've got our side. Oh, there's our other side. So this is going to be the side of our toolbox. Now, I've already cut the bottom piece, which is just an 18-inch piece of wood, like that. That's all ready to go. But the sides, we said we have to cut down the middle, so... I'm going to show you how we can do that. Uh, and I told you I was going to show you a different way to measure. Not so much measure, but a way to find the center. So on a board like this, and this is a good technique if you have to, like if we had to split this into three pieces, the math and the fractions can get complicated and prone to making mistakes. So there's a, there's a little technique I'll show you where it takes some of the complexity out of trying to find a center of, of a, of a um, fraction. So... The way it works, you guys, I'll do it this way so you can see. So the way it works is we have, I know we have kind of an odd measurement here. We've got a nine and a quarter inch board. We saw how that can be tricky to find the center. Um, but a little technique is if, if we take a measurement like 10 inches, if this was 10 inches, it'd be real easy to find the center. We just mark it at five. So we can do that. We can actually make it easier for ourselves. We take that ruler. I hope you guys can see this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle it so that one edge falls here at the end of the ruler. Okay, I'll hold this up a little bit. One edge falls at the end of the ruler right there, and then the other edge, we stop at the 10. So I'm just angling it across, and then what I have to do now is just at the five, we know five is half a 10, we just mark that five, and we know that's gonna be the center of the board, okay? If we had to divide this into, like I said, three pieces, um, just take another measurement. We know that 12 
divide, divided by 3 is equal to 4. So we can angle this out to 12 all the way down to here, like that. And then if we go every 4 inches, 4 and then 8, okay, we know those marks are going to be divided evenly. Those measurements are going to be even. So a little, little technique that takes the fractions out of it for you if you have to divide a board into pieces. Now, one mark isn't going to help us a lot because we're going to end up, we want a nice straight line, so we, it could end up being crooked. So we need another mark, right? So I'm going to put another mark up here so that I at least have two marks so I can make a line that's going to be parallel to the edge. So I'll go back to my five. And now I've got two marks. Probably would have been better to have one way down here. Now I just connect those two marks with a nice straight line like that. Okay, now we've got a line straight down the middle. That's kind of a long cut, and um, I told you I was going to show you another technique for holding this down. We can simply just screw it to the tabletop, but later on, we don't want to see holes in this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to screw it in a place where we're going to put a screw later to screw it onto the toolbox. And um, in our case, we're going to need a screw from this cut edge down about an inch or so. So I'm just going to measure an inch down and put a mark right there. I'm going to say I'm going to say there. Put a mark there. And our screw is going to be, uh, we want it to be centered on the edge of a piece of wood. We don't want it, the screw poking out the side this way or that way. So the center of that would be three eighths of an inch. What I do, I make a three eighths mark and then Actually, what you can do is use your finger like a gu to, as a guide to make a line along the edge like that, three-eighths away. And hold, that, hold that measurement and do it on this side, too. So we're going to end up putting, ultimately, a screw here and screw here. So now what I can do is I can take and I can screw that. Is that going to work? It should work. Screw that down there and there, and then I don't need to worry about clamping it. So I'm going to put a little bit different screw, a little bit shorter screw. Actually, these are the screws we're going to be using to hold it all together anyway. So two screws here. I'll get them started first. Move it down just a tiny bit. Get them started in the wood. Nice and straight. And now we can slide this over to the edge. Make sure your, your cut line is nowhere near the edge of the table, you don't want to cut into your tabletop. You just screw that in. I wouldn't recommend doing that like on your dining room table or anything, but something like this, it's fine. All right, so this is called ripping. There's a rip cut means you're cutting with the grain. We've been cutting cross cuts mostly, which is across the grain. And this saw can do both. Um, it's a, it's a multi-purpose, general purpose saw, but some saw blades have a smaller tooth pattern, they're just for cross cutting, and some with a larger tooth padding is, pattern is for ripping, but I think this will do both. Let's see how this is going to work. There we go. pieces cut. I'm going to back those screws back out. We don't need that in, the, in there anymore. Spin that out. Like that. All right, so we've got all the pieces that we need for assembly now. And 
we can do, I'll show you some sanding and stuff that we can do probably afterwards, but so we can start setting up for assembly. So the first thing we're going to assemble, I believe will work well, is to assemble the sides to the bottom. So this is going to be our bottom piece here. Our sides are going to go on here just like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp, try to clamp it up like this. I'm working by myself here. So I'm going to try to clamp it up and then I'm going to put some screws in here, either three or four screws in there. Okay. So when you do this, this cut edge that we just cut, we want to make sure that that is up. Okay. Because if it's less than perfect, it doesn't matter as much. We want this bottom to be nice and even on the bottom edge of your toolbox. So make sure you, you get that set up like that. So I'm going to set up a clamp. There it is right here. I'm kind of going to double clamp it here. I'm going to clamp a clamp to the table. And I'm going to use a C clamp here. So I'm going to clamp the clamp. And it kind of acts like a vice that way. Clamp that. Oops. Clamp that down. Like that. And then I can stand this up in that clamp and tighten that clamp. So I've got that secured and frees up my hands a little bit. And might as well use this one here. That's going to go there. So what we're going to do, I think, is we'll mark ahead of time where our screws are going to go. I'm going to make that three inch line along this bottom edge here. Okay, and probably four screws would be good. Remember when you put, we don't want screws too close to the corner or the end of a board. It's likely to, it could split, right? So we're going to go we're going to start maybe a couple inches from each end. That's safe up there. And then, so that's two screws. We'll probably get by with just three of them. So I'm just going to put one right in the middle. And our board is 18, so we'll go nine inches, half of 18. Three screws, that should be funny. Do do here. All right, so to get this started and with these screws, we use these for our for the birdhouse project. The length is inch and three quarters. These are the, the Torx or star drive bit that you need. It comes with it right in the box almost all the time. And um, yeah, they make their own hole. Works really well. They're less likely to split than most other types of screws like drywall screws. So I'm gonna start those screws in ahead of time here. So I don't have to be trying to hold three things at once. So at least one or two maybe. One on each end. Trying to get it nice and straight. Like that. We set that right up on here. We want it flush and even on the two ends and also on the bottom. Like that. And then we sink our screws in. Got one more in the middle. All right, now we just got to do the other side. I think this one here, we can clamp it directly to the table. We don't need this little clamp, this big clamp. I don't know. So we'll take that and go back to our little clamp here. And we'll clamp that piece that we just screwed, so that'll hold it upright to where we want it. Remember the cut edge that I made? We'll put that on the top here, so it's going to go on there like that. We want the good factory edge, milled edge on the bottom here, so I'm going to make my line like this. And our measurements were two inches from each end, two inches here. Two inches here, and then our nine inches, which is our center. And then I also started my screws ahead of time, so I don't have to be holding them while I'm trying to hold everything else. Oh, that one's wrong one. That. And, one more. and then we'll have our 
marks or signs in there. Yep. All right, so now there's our sides and bottom. And since we didn't do anything to the width of the bottom or the sides, these should fit right in there. Should fit right in there. Let's see how we're going to go. Yeah, that's going to work on there. Like that. And then one over here. Let's type it in there. Just like that. And then we're going to put some screws. We're going to start. Actually, we should probably put our handle in, shouldn't we? Make it a little bit easier. Let's see if we can get that in there first. I'm going to leave it long for now. I can go back and cut it. Sometimes it's not bad. I can leave it long anyway. But leave it a little bit long. It sticks out the end on both sides here. And that one's a little tight, isn't it? I may have to hammer that end in if I had a hammer. <coughs> if I had a hammer, a hammer in the morning. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get that. We'll use our clamp. So, like I said, I'm going to go back and trim that later on. I'm just going to slide this one in all the way until it fits my box. Slide this one in all the way. There we go. And we almost have it. A little more. in there good. This one looks pretty good. A little bit more. And a tiny bit more. All right. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to start by screwing one side here. And then we've got a hole there, so I'm going to go ahead and screw get this end lined up. Their handle's getting a little tricky there, so I'm going to line up that one and screw that one in there, and then I can move everything around that I want. Persuade this into position. Like that. I'm going to put my screw in there. Start up here. There we go. All right, I'm going to push that bottom out a little bit. We'll wait on that. This side. So we want it our handle. What problem is our handle is kind of holding us back a little bit. But it'll all come together in the end. And actually, I'm trying to do a good job with this one because I'm going to give it to one of you guys. And I'll tell you how you can get this toolbox when I'm done here. Anyway, we're going to keep adding some screws here and there, right? Yeah, we're going to get that all lined up right. We're going to cut our handle to fit. It's in there pretty well. I just got to push that out a little bit, get that screwed in. It's not a bad toolbox. Okay, handle's plenty strong. We can, like I said, we can go back and we can do some filing and sanding on it, make it look nice. Um, and a lot of times you can even customize the inside. You can put pieces of wood in there. You know, well, I'll show you in a minute, but you can put other pieces in there that you can use for dividers and things like that. For years, carpenters, cabinet makers, they 
they made their own toolboxes, big tool chests actually, and they took great pride in how their toolboxes were put together. It was kind of showcase their talents. And so you see over hundreds of years, you've seen uh, very <clears throat> elaborate cabinet makers and builders and carpenters toolboxes. I'm gonna have a couple here I can show you. I'm gonna set this one aside for a minute. There's a different version. There's one that is a different design. You can kind of design them how you want to. This one was made uh, by my son, actually. And this one, you can see, he didn't use a dowel on top here. He just screwed a piece of wood across the top. And I've seen also people use uh, leather belts. Just attach a belt to the side here, like a strap, so you can sling it over your shoulder, carry your tools around. This one's got a piece of particle board for a bottom. You know, a little bit different layout, different design, but it works, works pretty well as I use this. Um, here's another... <clears throat> really old toolbox. This one's kind of cool. This one, um, this one, I'm not sure exactly where this came from. This came from a relative's garage I was helping clean out and it was getting thrown away. So I grabbed it and I, I use it today. You see the handle on this one? It's metal. It's actually a threaded rod down through. You can see the bolts on the end and then there's a pipe on top of that. It pivots a little bit and they've got a divider in here. There's a groove that that slides down into and it's just a little bit more stylist, stylized ends there. You could do that with your toolboxes as well. Make them look a little bit fancier. And this one's a bit longer. It's probably about almost, almost close to three feet long for that. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of a cool box I want to show you guys. I'm not sure what the heck this thing is. But this one was a relative's, ooh, I have two relatives. I'm not sure which one belonged to. One was a Plumber. The other one was a was a fireman, and then a machinist. So um, this somehow ended up in my hands. But it's a really quite a fancy box. You can see the front here. It's got an old leather strap handle, but the way that's pinned in there, there's metal pins down through that hold that in position. The corners are dovetail joints, a special kind of joinery where the, the like the tail of a dove. They interlock with each other. These straps are probably added later just to kind of keep it from coming apart. Um, there's a kind of a cool latch here where you push down, unlatch it, and there's actually a couple little finger grabs that you can use to open that up. And you see the size of those hinges on it, very large hinges. And the first thing you notice is some kind of a spot here where the wood is removed there. And if you look down inside, there are some specialized um, kind of grooves, cutouts, I guess routed out for something. And I'm not sure at all what that could be that fit in this box. It could have been some kind of special instrument, um, like a measuring or gauge or something like that. I, I, I have no idea what that is. I did a lot of research on it, so if you have any ideas, let me know what this might have been. I don't know if you can see it really well. I thought maybe it was a microscope case, but microscope case kind of stand up a little bit differently than this. Um, there's also the only other markings I could find on it. There's some red striping, it's green paint with a red stripe there. So I thought maybe that's something to do with the fire department, but uh, I'm not really sure. My, my grandfather was a New York City fireman, and I just thought maybe this was something to do with servicing fire equipment or something like that, or some, some sort of special apparatus. But it could have been a plumbing thing for my other grandfather, too. So anyway, kind of cool box. Not sure what it is, but all right, so. I think we're pretty well covered with our toolboxes. So I told you you could win that toolbox that I just made. I'll show you how you can win it. <clears throat> All you have to do to win that toolbox, and I'll put it in the middle school, I'll finish it up nice and sand it and make it look good for you. And I'll bring it to school and then you can come and claim it at some point. But to claim it, what you have to do is you have to log on to um, Tech Ed Enrichment Classroom, and you know the, the code to, to get in there and post a comment telling me what these two tools are, starting with this one here. You can see it's got two handles on it. It's got a pretty sharp blade right here. Okay, if you can tell me the correct name for that. And also these devices. They're both the same, two different designs. This one, there's a little screw on the bottom, and the blade, this thing opens up like that, and it locks in different positions. Okay, that's a more modern one. You see it's made by Stanley. This one's an older one. It's an older wooden tangled version of the same tool. You can see it right there. That actually has my grandfather's initials on it. It says, so, close that one back up. 
I use those all the time. So if you could tell me the proper name, or if you log in Infinite Camp, uh, excuse me, log into Google Classroom, Tech Ed Enrichment, post a comment, you'll be the first one to do it and win it. Okay, and then I'll, like I said, I'll leave it at the school. So hopefully you guys enjoyed these. I think I'm just going to do one more for this year. Probably later in the week, I'll have a little demonstration for you. But I think that's probably going to, well, it's probably going to be at the project. That last one may be a project too, but we'll see. Let me know if you have any questions. I may have left something out. Just let me know. Just email me or message me somehow. Thanks. Enjoy your day.